Hey GC, what's going on? Hope you're having an amazing Sunday so far. Thank you so much for tuning in online with us today. As you know, we will be online only today. So we appreciate you taking time to uh, be with us, to listen to God's word. And whether you're listening to, to this on a Sunday or midweek, uh, doesn't really matter. We believe that God can speak to you in a moment. So we thank you so much for joining us today. Today we're online exclusively because a lot of us uh, at GC are serving in Rocky Hill uh, today. We are serving uh, an incredible community uh, for the Challenger Day 2024. Uh, you may be saying, what is Challenger Day 2024? Well, Rocky Hill, uh, their community puts together a, a baseball uh, season for those with disabilities in physical or developmental challenges. And so uh, they have this team that practices and plays games throughout the year. Then they have like a jamboree day where they all come together and volunteers from uh, their town and surrounding towns come together to support this incredible uh, community uh, of, of individuals. And so a lot of us are there at Elmridge Park today serving. And so uh, that is why we are not in person, uh, but we are online exclusively. Uh, but I'm excited to dive into God's word today with you today. Share uh, from Ephesians chapter two, uh, a brief message here, and I hope that encourages you in your faith. But before I dive into the word of God, just want to thank each and every one of you that give generously to the ministry of Generation Church. You know, uh, it's by your generosity that we're able to continue to reach generations far from God and lead them into an authentic relationship with Jesus. So thank you so much for giving. If you want to give today, you can go online to our website, click the giving tab, uh, and there's many ways on how to give. But thank you for your generosity, truly making a difference in the lives of so many people. Uh, today I'm going to be preaching out of Ephesians chapter 2. Uh, I read a couple verses to you, and we're going to be talking about faith today. We're going to be talking about how to exercise your faith today. So I want to read Ephesians chapter 2. Uh, starting in verse 3. This is what the Bible says. And you are dead in your trespasses and sins in which you once walked. We all once walked in our sins. Following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience. Listen to this. Among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh. We all have fleshly desires uh, that we that that are pulling for us on a daily basis, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and we're by nature children of wrath, like the rest of mankind. You may be saying, "Wow, this is getting dark really quick, Kev. What's going on?" <laughs> Keep reading, verse four. But God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love with which He loved us. Even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved in raising us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So that in the coming ages, he might show the immeasurably riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. You know, God loves you today. He cares about you. Jesus died on a cross for your sins and for my sins. And he loves us so much. He has grace and kindness toward us. I'm going to wrap in verse 8 and 9. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not by your own doing. It is a gift of God not a result of works, so that no one may boast. We are saved by grace through faith. through faith. It is nothing that we have done on our own, but only by the blood of Jesus that we are saved and have salvation today. Let's pray one more time. Father, I thank you so much for what you're doing in our lives. Lord, I thank you that you continue to speak to us. Father, I thank you that you have saved us from a path of destruction from the pit, from where the enemy wants to take us. Lord, you have saved us so that we can have eternal life. And we thank you for that today. We pray that you continue to speak to us, be with us today. 
In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Title of my message today, Exercising Faith. Simply put, Exercising Faith. We need to be exercising our faith on, I'd say, a daily basis. And to give you kind of a definition of the word faith, it is essentially a very simple, simply put, trust. Faith is trust. It is a strong confidence and a reliance upon someone or something, often with the object of trust understood. If you have faith in something, you're relying on that thing. You're relying on that thing that you have faith in. You know, we believe here at GC that our faith is rooted, is founded in Christ Jesus and what he did on the cross for us at Calvary. So when we trust him, we have faith in him, we are also saying that we believe what Jesus did, that he died on the cross for our sin, that he was buried and he rose on the third day, God rose him up, and he is seated in heaven today, alive, and we serve a God that's alive, that is not dead. You know, I grew up playing sports. I played sports my whole life, and my primary sports were baseball and football. Uh, and so I grew up watching the Red Sox, huge Red Sox fan. Uh, and I grew up also watching the, uh, the Boston Celtics, because by default, when you're a Red Sox fan, you just kind of merge into all things Boston sports. And uh, I grew up watching the Boston Celtics too. And I know, I know there's a game on tonight, 8 p.m., game two against the Mavs. I'm, I'll be rooting for them. I'll be staying up a little later tonight watching that game. Uh, but I'm also a Celtics fan. And I'm sure that you have your teams that you watch and that you've been a fan of. But a lot of times when you're at a baseball game and your team is losing, uh, and, and you're, they're down by four or five runs and you're starting to get to the seventh, eighth inning, uh, you, your faith starts to diminish a little bit in the fact that they're going to win. Uh, but somehow when you're watching live sports, for me personally, I can't leave early. I have to stay through the end of the game because you just never know what will happen. You never know at any point in time where somebody will get up to the plate and hit a home run or something like that. There's always this, this element of faith, of trust in your team that they are gonna pull it out in the back end of the game. And so uh, I don't know if you've experienced that. Maybe some of you have stayed up super late through these uh, NBA finals uh, because you got your team that you know, when the West Coast teams are playing, it doesn't start till 10 p.m. or 9 p.m. So we're up until super late hours in, uh, in the night just to watch our team because we believe and have faith that they are going to win. See, having faith for something sounds exciting. It sounds uh, exhilarating. But when it doesn't involve you, it's a little easier to have faith. It's a little easier to believe when uh, you are not the basketball player, when you are not the Celtic, when you're not Jason Tatum or, or, or Jalen Brown, it, it's a little easier to have a little bit more faith uh, if you are not the one involved. But do you know that scripture tells us that we have been saved by grace through faith, that we have salvation by grace through faith. And it involves us. It involves us to move, to act, to be a part of this thing in our lives called faith, called trust, called uh, being a part of the family of God. And, and, I, and I can tell you right now that sometimes it's a little easier than others and sometimes it's a little harder than others when things are going well you want to have a lot of faith you're excited you're you you, you have uh, this this level of excitement in your life but sometimes uh you just don't you just don't want to have faith you just you're struggling so much or you're going through a hard time and and sometimes your faith wavers a little bit when we're involved when it involves us it takes a little bit more work and so i want to talk to you a little bit about this, uh, this, this phrase here, to be saved by grace through faith. See, the presupposition before the, the noun here, by, by grace, the word by is indicated to mean 
that we are achieving something. You are saved by grace, then you are moving forward. You're trying to achieve something. This word through, through faith, the word through is to continuing in time toward a completion. And so if we're working towards something or we're working through something, then there is a process of completion that is ahead. And we have been saved, redeemed, and put on a path that God ultimately has for us by his grace. But it is through our faith that we live this life today. <clears throat> you know, uh, I know for me, when I uh, first put my trust and faith in Jesus, it was something that, you know, I didn't really understood. I understood it because it's what I thought I was supposed to do. <clears throat> it's what, you know, I thought was the right decision. It's what I kind of grew up in. And so for me, <clears throat> for me, I just thought I got a little, uh, got a little choked up there. <clears throat> So for me, putting my faith and my trust in Jesus was something that I, uh, I just kind of started to do because it's something that I, I, I grew up doing. And, and, and over the course of time, I realized that, hey, this thing is about a personal relationship. It's not about what I grew up doing or what my parents told me. It is a personal relationship with my creator. And so that evolved over time that I realized, wow, I... I have been saved, me personally. I have been saved by what Jesus did on the cross at Calvary. And this is a continuous movement. This is continuous in and through our lives. It's not that you give your life to Christ and then everything just kind of, that's it. That's all, okay, great, awesome, great. Yes, we receive Jesus as our Lord and personal Savior. We are saved. Now we have eternal life, but... Faith is a process. That's my first point today. Faith is a process. Faith is a process. It, 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 it takes time to experience life, to experience hardship, to experience what does it mean to put your full faith and trust in Christ. Romans chapter four, verse 13 says this. For the promise to Abraham and his offspring that he would be heir of the world did not come through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs. Faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, there is no transgression. That is why it depends on faith in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all of his offspring, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to the one who shares the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. See, Abraham's purpose, his assignment was to be the father of many nations. That's what God called him to do. And it came through the righteousness of faith to be told that you're going to be the father of many nations at such an old age. Abraham was very old. Uh, I'd say that you need a little bit of faith in your life to believe that that's actually going to happen, especially when you're that old. And we try so hard to figure out this life on a daily basis, to figure out what's next for me, what's my next step. God, what do you have in store for me? Um, maybe when I get there, when I get to that point, then I'll arrive, then I'll be awesome, then I'll, then I'll, then I'll, uh, I'll be uh, right where you want me. We, we have this, this thought that we need to get somewhere in life. However, the more that I read scripture, the more that uh, I have life experiences, what I'm learning is that the purpose of our lives is more about trusting God through the process than it is about arriving at a social status or at a specific position in life. It is about trusting God through the process. This life is uh, but a vapor, as the Bible says, but are you going to trust God through it all, through the process of growth, of maturity? of spiritual uh, 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 maturity? Are you gonna grow on a daily basis? 
life is more about that than it is about arriving at a specific location or position in life. I, I committed this uh, purpose statement uh, very early on uh, in my marriage and, um, and it's kind of evolved over, over time to now when you introduce children into the mix. Uh, but you know, this is kind of my, my purpose statement for my life that I always bring things back to, that I always kind of, as my foundation, this is where I start everything. And for me personally, this yours may, if you have a purpose statement, yours may look a little different or sound a little different, but this is for me, this is my purpose statement. I am committed to love God with all that I am, to serve my wife, with everything I have and to care for my children unconditionally, all while remaining faithful to the call of God on my life. And I can tell you right now that there's been times when that has been a little difficult. <laughs> there's been times when, you know, my purpose statement, I've been, okay, I gotta go back to that. I gotta go back to that. Uh, it has not been easy at times to live that out. But I can tell you right now that it is a good foundation for me to come back to. It is something that I always say, hey, like you gotta get back to, you know, what is your purpose? What are you doing here? What does God have for you? And ultimately it starts with me following the, the two greatest commandments, which Jesus said to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul, love your neighbor as yourself. And if we can continue to remind ourselves of that, I think it is crucial, you know, and you may be saying, you know, why is that such an important part of your life? Why is your faith in Jesus such an important part of your life? And I can tell you that he has completely changed my life and put me on a path where I personally never thought that I would be. And I, I, I've experienced some pretty bad things in my life and he saved me from them and he's pulled me out of some pretty dark spaces and uh, I have committed my life to him. And my prayer is that you too would also see the value and the joy and the peace that can come through a, a, a living, breathing relationship with your creator, uh, with Jesus Christ. It is important for us to also understand that Jesus paid the price. He did it all on the cross at Calvary, that uh, when he died, he was the final atonement for our sins so that we don't have to live a life of pain. We don't have to live a life of, of terrible uh, hardship, but that we can believe and trust and look forward to the future that we have uh, when it comes to eternal life, when it comes to the fact that, hey, this is not our home, that we are citizens of heaven, not of earth, but that we have uh, another place that we are going in eternity. I want to read one more passage of scripture and leave you with another point. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 says this. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for. The conviction, I love this translation, the conviction, which also means proof of things not seen. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the proof of things not seen. For by it, the people of old received their commendation. And by faith, we understand that the universe was created by the word of God, so that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible. What we see was not made of things that are visible. Write this down today. Faith is believing even when. Faith is believing even when. Even when what, Kev? Even when we don't believe ourselves. Even when uh, we, 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 we don't really know what the future holds. Even when we get that bad diagnosis from the doctor, even when we get that terrible news, even when we are struggling, even when we ourselves are unsure of our future, even when. Faith is believing even when things are not good. And I, I, I am not sitting up here saying that it is easy to do this or it is easy to put your faith and your trust in Jesus even when things aren't going great. But I can tell you right now that it is something that will not only strengthen you as an individual, but will also bond together the, the relationship that you have with 
Christ, that if you believe and you have faith, even when things may not be going so well, that strengthens your relationship with him. It draws, you, you, are, you are able to draw closer to Jesus. You lean more in on him in the passage of scripture that says, my, per my strength is made perfect in your weakness. That comes to life more than ever. And when we're going through something tough, and I, I don't know, maybe you're struggling today. Maybe you're struggling with a, a decision that you made. Maybe you're struggling with uh, where your life is at. And you're like, what, what am I even doing with my life? Maybe that's where you are today. I can tell you right now that putting your full faith and trust in Jesus, will he will come alongside you and he will be with you in the midst of every situation that you face. Here, this is what we know. We know that we live in a broken world. We know we live in a sinful world, but we have the ultimate builder on our side. The Bible clearly said that uh, by faith, we understand that the universe was created by the word of God. God created everything around us. And it's a beautiful picture of, of who he is. You look up to the left or to the right, you look outside, and you see his beautiful creation, we have the ultimate builder on our side, which is an incredible picture of how we, as individuals, put our faith in, in Christ, and we may be broken, we may be um, struggling, and he is the one that puts us back together. He is the builder. He is the the, 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 the potter, and we are the clay. He is the one that molds us and shapes us when we put our faith and our trust in him. And the sooner that we realize that he did this all for us, that God sent his only begotten son so that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. The sooner that we believe this and trust this and live our life like this, uh, this, this, this transformation happens in us. You know, the Bible says that we are transformed by the renewing of our minds, that every day we wake up and we put our faith and our trust in Jesus and we believe that he has given us all that we need for this day. Give us this day our daily bread, just this day. We don't need to worry about 15, 20 years from now what's gonna happen, but give us this day our daily bread, that when we put our faith and our trust in him, he will give us everything that we need for today. And I, again, I, I struggle with, I'm a little bit of a control freak, so I struggle a little bit with this, uh, but to really say, hey, it's not about me, not my will, but your, be done, your will be done in my life, Christ. Like when you say that, when you actually act that out, uh, I can tell you that it is not an easy thing, but let me tell you this, when I do that, it relieves so much pressure. The, 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 the stress or anxiety that I have of the future or what's ahead, when I give that to God, when I say, you are the one that ultimately knows my future, you are the one that has me in the palm of your hands, you are the one that I am giving everything to you, when I make that decision on a daily basis, it relieves me of the pressure to try to be someone that I'm not, to try to be somebody that he hasn't created me to be. So I, I pray right now that as you are going through this situation or whatever you're experiencing, that you would truly walk by faith and not by sight, not by what you see, but that what you believe in the faith that you have in what Jesus has done for you. Can I pray with you today? Father, I thank you for every single person tuning in, Lord. I thank you that they took time out of their day to hear your word, Lord. And ultimately, Father, it's not the words that are coming out of, my, out of my mouth, Father, but it is the words off of the page of the Bible, of the scripture that can speak to us, Lord. You are the ultimate provider, Lord. You are the one that gives us everything that we need. We would be nowhere if it weren't for you. And so we thank you for that. We thank you for sending your son, Jesus, Father. And as every single person under the sound of my voice is listening today, Father, I pray right now that their faith would, would rise, that their faith would be lifted up, that they would uh, look to you for everything that they need, that they would not look to the left or to the right or to others, Lord, but that they would look to you for what they need today. Father, give us our daily bread today. 
You are the same yesterday, today, and forever, and we receive your love and your grace and your mercy for us. Strengthen our faith today that as we're going throughout our week, and we may get some bad news or a struggle may come or hardship, Lord, that you would be there with us and that would strengthen our faith rather than diminish it. Lord, you are the creator of the universe. You slung the stars into existence and you created everything that we have. And so we thank you for your beauty and for your goodness to us. We pray right now that you would continue to use us for your glory and to continue to move forward the gospel message of Jesus Christ. Use us today. Bless us today. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Hey, thanks again for tuning in online. I pray that this message bless you, that this little snippet today uh, was a blessing to your life. If you are around in the Connecticut area, we'd love to uh, see you next week here, right here at the house, 105 Marsh Street. Uh, hope you can join us for church next Sunday. Hope you have a great week and God bless.